Okay, this is CD number seven, understanding the property clock and how to exploit it for maximum gain. Now this is a book I wrote with how to books and it's probably the book that I'm most proud of because it identifies the cyclical nature of property prices and identifies the drivers of the prices upwards and downwards. So if you think about a property clock face and you think at 12 o'clock and six o'clock is when property prices move upwards so if you was to speed up the fall and rise of property prices over a 12 hour period you would have between 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock as property prices rising and 6 o'clock to 12 o'clock back again as property prices falling so between 12 and 6 everybody's buying it, that's kind of obvious because between 12 and 6 is when prices are rising you've got everybody buying now when I say everybody I've split everybody into three categories you've got category one which is professional property investors category two novice stroke perspective investors and category three owner occupiers the professional property investors invest in because they'll invest in any condition uh, regardless of whether prices are rising or falling as long as the yields good you'll have the novice stroke speculative investors that are investing because prices are rising and in their mindset they believe that historics are an in indicator of the future so if prices are rising they believe they're going to continue to rise without applying any sort of fundamentals to the actual price rise and then you'll have owner occupiers who will be just simply choosing somewhere to live but also buying because if they wait any longer the prices will rise and it will cost them more so you've got pretty much everybody buying at that time now between 6 and 12 the only people you've got left buying are professional property investors because they're the only ones that are interested in property even though prices are falling because if prices keep falling yields get better so their their assessment of a property is pretty much how much cash is it going to put in their pocket on a monthly basis like myself you know I don't care where prices in fact I, I like it when prices are falling because then you know you've got pretty much everybody dropping out of the market and it's just you competing against other professional property investors and let me tell you we drive hard bargains so it cuts out everybody out of the market now if we was to then further define the property clock and say well okay as prices rise they rise to a point where the yield drops because if you think about as I've said about the the yield calculation it's rent divided by purchase price now if rent is staying the same which it does rent really just only moves up with inflation so and if we're looking at the, the cycle going over a period of say five to ten years you can say that rent is relatively constant what you'll have is that as prices rise yields switch from being a decent return to a poor return so if we just said at the three o'clock point cash coming out of that property as in the profit per month has gone from positive to negative at the point where it turns three o'clock so as you imagine the, the pro property price is rising rising from 12 o'clock to three o'clock it's rising 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 to the point where the price has risen so much that now if you was to rent it out all you're going to do is break even at three o'clock and this, as the time moves forward as prices is rising by six o'clock the price is so high it's very cash flow negative and so that's what happens at six o'clock and now so you've got from six o'clock prices are starting to fall now so you would then have prices falling 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 to now where you will get at nine o'clock the prices have fallen to the point where now the property is cash flow positive so if you can see that now so so if I take you through it now from 12 o'clock a property at 12 o'clock would be say yielding at 12 percent you'd be you'd be picking out for 50 grand and it would be chucking out 200 pounds profit per month now if you think about it that property at three o'clock will be say worth 75,000 pounds and when rented out would make you nothing then you would get from three o'clock to six o'clock the property be worth a hundred thousand pounds and the property would if rented out will lose you 200 pounds a month then you've got from six o'clock to nine o'clock the property price drops from a hundred thousand pounds to 75,000 pounds and it makes you no money on a monthly basis when rented out and then 
then you have the property price dropping from 75 to 50 at midday and at that point it starts making you profit um, and it's highly cash flow positive so between nine o'clock and twelve o'clock you're making the cash flow per month is growing growing and growing and then you get back to twelve o'clock and then the prop prices start rising so you can see over an accelerate if we was to accelerate the property cycle over 12 hour period you would have property prices rising from 12 till 6 and then falling from 6 till 12 and you can see who are getting involved at that price the only people that would be investing between 6 o'clock and 12 o'clock will be professional property investors and they no one will be investing between 6 and 9 because property prices are falling and it's cash flow negative so that's when you get the real crash in prices between six o'clock and nine o'clock and that could only that could probably last six months we may be undergoing uh, one of the quickest crashes in history at the minute where we've got dramatic falls in prices but they're now falling so low that the us investors are getting in, back interested in buying again so uh, and then you'd get at nine o'clock you'd still have falling prices but investors are still buying and then you'll go back to 12 o'clock so I hope you understand that but the books included with the package so you can really read that and understand that but in each quadrant so I'm defining the quadrants now between 12 and 3 3 to 6 6 to 9 and 9 to 12 they each carry their own name now between 12 and 3 I define that a hot spot between 3 and 6 I call that a cooling spot between 6 and 9 that's a cold spot and between 9 and 12 that's a warm spot so each quadrant has its own strategy in the hot spot between 12 and 3 you buy and you buy everything uh, between 3 and 6 you can trade which means buy and sell between 6 and 9 you should hold because there's not really anything you can do and between 9 and 12 you should buy again so let's go through it between 12 and 3 the area is undergoing property price growths and the properties are cash flow positive so you'll be crazy not to want to buy in these areas now the sort of areas that I buy in and I buy for my clients are in hot spots now that's where prices are growing and they are cash flow positive so you can be you can expect capital gain from investing in these areas so really they're no brainers because you know that your equity is going to grow so your money is going to grow and you're going to get an income every month from these properties so the strategy there is to buy everything now you've got from three till six which is when what's happening now is that you've got property prices growing still but if you rent it out on a monthly basis you're losing money so the cash flow negative now the only strategy you can have here is buy and sell because there's no point in buying these properties at this price and holding them because they're cash flow negative you should only want to buy them if you want to sell them now I'm not a property trader I've never bought and sold stuff that's not my game I'm an, I'm an investor but there are people that can make a lot of money out of this where you're buying at one price and selling at a higher price especially when you're doing this with other people's money i.e. the banks then you know a 10% gain on a million quid is a hundred thousand pounds and if you've bought properties without your money and you've made a hundred grand out of nothing that's a fairly good return but I'm in in this program I'm not advocating to buy and sell but that is a strategy you could do in what's known as a calling spot which is between three and six then you've got between six and nine which is it's a cash flow negative property and the property prices are falling now there's nothing you can do here so you don't want to buy in this area because of cash flow negative and you don't really want to buy it in this area because the property prices are falling so in effect if you come across this an area like that where the property prices are falling then there's no point buying but then you get to the point where between 9 and 12 where the prices have fallen so much that actually when you rent the property out it's cash flow positive now in these areas you should be buying now as I'm doing these CDs and where we're currently at in the market is between 9 and 12 now I'm buying properties anywhere between 15 and 25 thousand pounds these are dirt cheap these used to be 45 they have now fallen to 25 they will rent out for 350 400 pounds a month highly cash flow positive but still could fall down to say 15 even 10 grand a piece now I'm not bothered that they go down to if I buy at 25 and they go down to 15 I'm not bothered because what will happen I'll just buy more because I know that the property prices will start growing again and so if I bought at 25 and they fall to 15 okay I've lost 10k on capital but I know that at some point that property will grow to greater than 25 just because the yield is so attractive and 
we're in a current, uh, currently a funny phase at the minute where we've got the credit crunch going and really the only people that can buy are either cash buyers or people that have got good relationships with their banks and I'm one of those people I can get 65% loan to value finance on any property in the market I just need to find 35% and then when you combine that with a no money down scheme I can literally buy without any money as long as I get it 35% BMV so I'm not worried that I'm buying a property that's yielding 20-25% and it's fallen in value because I, my money's safe in that investment because I have so much faith in A, property and B, in the market, in UK assets, in, in UK property that the market will recover, the credit crunch will get sorted out, banks will get back to, back to lending and we'll see dramatic price increases especially with the fact that they're printing money and if they're increasing the money supply more money just means inflation so we, we, we will see prices rise and we'll be back to that 12 to 3 regions very very soon so they're the strategies that you should employ when you're looking at the property clock and applying it to your own personal situation right so what I want to talk about now is the driver of these price movements because really yields are only a reflection of property prices you know it's it's property prices that drive yields not yields driving property prices so the property prices and what drives the the price movements is everything and it really is the competition between professional investors speculative investors and owner occupiers now the way a professional investor will work out the true value of a property is he will calculate it as a function of the rental value so if a property is going to rent out about around about 6k then a professional investor is probably going to pay maximum 12 times rental value so if we did 6k times 12 it's 72,000 pounds now a novice stroke speculative investor is going to pay the maximum of what a buy to let mortgage will lend to him now that would be 125 percent of the mortgage payment at current interest rates now that could be with certain lenders that could be anywhere between sixty thousand pounds and eighty five thousand pounds for example so the speculative and novice investor would really invest based on the fact that while well, prices are going up they're not looking at the monthly rental profit they're looking at capital growth so they're looking if they pay seventy eighty thousand pounds and it's because it's grown twenty percent from last year they're thinking next year they're going to make another 20 percent so hence their justification for paying eighty thousand eighty five thousand, 85,000 which is greater than what the professional investor would pay but then you'll have the owner occupier that wants to buy and they're going to pay as a function of their salary so they're going to pay 4.25 times their single or joint salary because that's what nationwide or halifax offer so if the average salary for the typical purchaser of that property is twenty five thousand you're going to get the owner occupier paying 4.25 times say the average salary is 25,000 is 106,250 plus a bit of a deposit of say 5,000 you're going to get the owner occupier buying that property for around about 110,000 so at the peak of prices you're going to have the owner occupier sitting at the top with the property prices at that level now if you if you was to look back in the old days when there was a hundred and twenty five percent lending you could even get owner occupiers paying hundred and thirty hundred and forty thousand pounds for a property that a professional investor would only value at seventy so you can see why professional investors have got frustrated like myself who I'm from Essex and I, I bought in Harlow and I would have quite happily bought in Harlow and surrounding areas but I've been priced out all the way to the point where I buy in Scotland where prices are below what a professional property investor will pay. So for example, currently uh, a property that I'm buying is I'm buying a one bed bungalow for £20,000 and it's going to rent out 375. Now that as a professional investor, would I would value that property at a 10% yield. We would do 375 times 12 which equals a £4,500 rent times 10%, you would put that property at a value of a true value of £45,000. If you was to work that out on a what an owner or occupier would pay for that, well, you'd say the average salary of a person buying a one-bed bungalow would be, say, £20,000 in this part of Scotland. You times that by 4.25, you would get 
85,000 and then you'd think what a, a, a novice speculative investor would pay well they wouldn't be attracted to it because the price has gone from 40,000 pounds to 20,000 pounds so there's been a, a price decline so uh, considering a novice investor is only interested in capital growth they're just out of the market at the minute uh, and also considering first time buyers they're put off by the market because they're thinking the price is going to fall so hence I'm able to buy this property which I put a true value of around about 45k and I'm paying £20,000 for it when the market comes back then you could see an owner occupier buying that property for £85,000 and if 100% plus mortgages come back you could see this one bed bungalow being sold for 100 to 120,000 pounds so you can see how attractive it is to buy these properties that yield very highly in this current state of the market where there are warm spots located around the country and you can start buying these investments where the real price and the actual price there's, there's a large differential and hence capital gain is locked in but this is all in the book with beating the property clock so you'll be able to really understand the differentials between real prices which are the fundamental prices of a property based on rental values and the actual prices and then you can work out overvaluations and undervaluations but okay now I want to talk about the opportunity cost of capital now that's all about if you was to spend some money on something what would that actually cost you in real terms so for example if you saw a brand new uh, Mercedes C-Class and it was 25,000 pounds and you was to buy that with your capital now what would that really cost you if you'd invested that in property or in anything else now I'm going to use the example property because I'm trying to highlight to you the fact of what that purchase cost you in terms of capital so if you were to look at you have two choices you can spend £25,000 on a Mercedes C-Class or you can spend £25,000 investing in five properties at 5k each down that generate you £200 a month profit now if you were to look at it if you, if you was to buy the Mercedes you'd buy that for £25,000 you would make no money off it and in five years time that car will be worth five thousand pounds right because cars depreciate so in effect your wealth has gone from twenty five thousand pounds to five thousand pounds if you bought the Mercedes in five years now if you was to then compare that with property you would buy five houses at 5k in on each of them and purchase price to say fifty thousand pounds generate two hundred pounds a month cash flow each so you'd make a thousand pounds a month profit so if you was to look in over five years you'd have sixty months times a thousand pounds a month profit so you'd make sixty thousand pounds a month profit plus you would have had you would have bought five properties at fifty thousand pounds each say so they're worth two hundred and fifty thousand pounds and let's say you experienced twenty percent growth over those five years being really prudent so you would have made 20% times 250 which equals 50,000 pounds add that to your 60,000 pounds that you've made on a rental monthly profit and that excludes rental growth as well you would have made a tidy sum 60,000 pounds plus 50 so that's 110,000 pounds profit now if you compare that with the car and the Mercedes C-Class you would have got in five years your car is now worth five thousand pounds and if the person if you'd have invested in property you'd have had a hundred and ten thousand pounds profit now someone could say to you that car cost you a hundred and ten thousand pounds because if you didn't if you didn't buy that car and you bought property you'd have made a hundred and ten thousand pounds so I hope what I've spoken about now should make you look at cars very very differently now what I do is I finance all my cars so I purchase the properties I generate the income which is a thousand pounds a month in this case and I use that thousand pounds a month to pay financing costs to buy a car so in my example if I was to buy that twenty five thousand pounds Mercedes 
so I would go to a finance company and they would lend that me on balloon finance at £300 a month so I would take my 25 k invest it in five properties get the £1,000 a month profit then go and approach a finance company to lend me the £25,000 to buy that car which will cost me £300 a month that £300 a month will come out my profit so I'd have a net £700 a month profit and then at the end of the five years I could give the car back because I'm balloon finance or I could just refinance again so in effect you get to have it all and that is the way you become very very wealthy is that because you appreciate the value of your capital and if you was to look at what your 25,000 has become in five years your 25,000 when you invest it in property has become 110,000 pounds that's a 400% return in five years and that's only assuming a 20% growth in property prices if you experience the sort of price growths that I've experienced and which I believe are going to be experienced in the next five years you're going to be looking at getting a hundred to two hundred percent price increases on these low priced properties so using that example if you'd have bought two hundred and fifty thousand pounds of the property and you'd experienced a hundred percent growth you would have made two hundred and fifty thousand pounds off your twenty five thousand pound investment and then you include the rental profit that's 250,000 plus 60 that's 310,000 pounds I say 300 grand you'd made off your 25 grand investment that is 12 times your money that is 1200 percent in five years now that sounds ridiculous 1200 percent return but it's actually true these are the numbers that buy to let investors have been making if you're structuring wise investments with no money down schemes then you are laughing because you're not only you're getting high yield you're getting high growth and you're making this with very very little money so when you drive past that car showroom and you see that car priced at 25k and you've got 25k sitting in a bank think again think about the opportunity cost of money because it's something that when someone tells you about it they realize it but if no one's actually sat down and explained to them that any amount of capital you should be investing and you should be using the cash flows from your investment to fund your personal purchases it's then that you you look upon your your savings very differently now if you need help building a property portfolio just give us a call on 0870 990 3205 that's 0870 990 3205 thanks